，也是跳过预科这一块的，是这么这一块。对，因为他十二年级呢用的是安大略省的体系，他们考多伦多大学更为方便。当然，他们也可以考麦吉尔大学，因为满足华人学生的名校情节。大家好，我是蒙特人小朱，今天特别开心，在这个阳光明媚的日子，我们摇到了。著名的登了登 ，The Sacred Heart School。那于老师你好，你好小朱，欢迎我们的于老师。非常荣幸能够有机会陪小朱呢一起参观这所久负盛名的圣心女女子学校，非常非常开心。无数次啊路过这个大城堡学校，也不知道里面长什么样。今天真的特别荣幸，可以一探究竟，一探究竟。你请。你请你请 This is where the school is located. Yeah, and you've got students from all over, and we're getting more and more from the South Shore as families are going that way. Um, the students from everywhere. Okay. Yeah, and uh, then we just got our pins to put all the countries. So we've got students from Zimbabwe, South Africa, China, Iran, Germany, Mexico. Uh, to name a few, so we'll be adding them to our international student population. We need another, we need another section, yeah. Map, the Earth map. <laughs> well, we're just going to put their flags, <laughs> okay. but... Yeah. Yeah. So this is the reception room or crush space from the auditorium. However, in June 2021, we built a 300-seat auditorium, so thanks to our wonderful donors, which is our donor wall. We are very proud of this space, so... Wow, it's huge here. Wow. It's like cinema. <laughs> so we have guest speakers or our annual play, Christmas play, talent show. For sure, it's all the students, yeah. for sure. So for 300 sure. seats. The total population of the school at the moment is 215 students. Yeah. So there's still space for faculty and staff. So yeah, it's a, it's a new addition. Um, and so convocation, graduation, award ceremonies, everything happens here. 那于老师刚 Stephanie 给我们介绍说，这么在我没想到这个 drama room 这个真的像一个电影院一样这么大哈，真的是在市中心这么寸土寸金的地方，因为西山也也不少私校，因为私校，但是有这么大的这个活动是电影，这个这种可以用于给学生的，真是很少有。非常少有，非常少有，就是他见的时间早一点，对对对，这个机会很很很宝贵，很宝贵，给学生很大的一个创作空间。是啊，不说别的，如果有就是说音乐或者是艺术爱好者，其实这个学校是非常的一个棒的一个学校，很好的展示空舞台。从西方的角度来讲，这个文学、呃、戏剧、呃、音乐，这都是最被人推崇的东西，所以。我很喜欢这个学校，非常非常有文化气息，非常，不管是硬件还是软件方面，都是非常非常的，让我觉得非常的吃惊的。看了这么多年的外表哈、啊，感觉是一个大的城大城,大城堡，没想到里面真的是，啊，一个小小的一个小的很大的一个社团的感觉，一个非常值得去探索。来，你请。This is the new gym. The new wellness center. Yeah. Uh, so it's open every day at lunch and after school till five. The girls just have to sign in here. There's always some a staff member that's on duty. Um, so it's just a, it's a fitness center with a classroom uh, for the elective courses that are to come in, like health and women in health, women in fitness. So trying to collaborate that with the science department, or they use it for meditation, yoga, things like that. So we do have different coach, right? I mean. Like a coach, coach. Okay. Yeah. So we we are a very traditional school in that we have fall sports, winter sports, and spring sports. So in the fall, we've got basket, uh, sorry, volleyball, soccer, cross country running, and golf. The winter is basketball, swimming. Um, time for lunch or time for class? time for lunch. Simba, <laughs> this <laughs> um, Yeah. So winter is soccer, uh, basketball, and swimming. And then the spring is about uh, tennis, badminton, flag football, and track and field. Okay, we're, we're gonna translate. Okay, 能能记住吗？这么多字？来开始啊！有高尔夫、高尔夫、网球，有的球类都有了一遍。有的球类都有了。还有什么？还有我们至少有不同季节有二十多种。我刚刚听大概大下有二十多种，非常的多姿多彩。行。This is the gym where phys ed class happens, but as well like. It's one of the largest gyms for a downtown school, so it's open. Wow. It's open every day at lunch for the girls to you just come. Feet off here. It's two full basketball courts, so More and we're just ten thousand, I think. Yeah, ten thousand square feet. So we participate in the Greater Montreal Athletic Association, but we're also a K school, 
that we compete in for soccer yeah. um, with the midgets and the juvies and then basketball as well. So there's a hundred, about a hundred schools coast to coast and they also are doing our accreditation process, um, which we have to do every seven years to maintain good academic practices as well as, as uh, standards for enrollment and, and governance and everything like that. Uh, and it also gives the girls leadership opportunities for middle and high school students so they can meet peers of schools in Vancouver, Toronto, Halifax, things like everywhere. that. So everywhere. Yeah, so everywhere. It's, it's from coast to coast uh, and it's the Canadian accredited independent schools. Let's go upstairs and see what we can find. So this is one of the libraries and it's open from 8 to 5 every day. Ms. Harrison's here, Ms. Dora's here as well after school to help the girls with any homework. They can work in small groups here. Um, Ms. Harrison's also very computer savvy, so she helps the girls with their Chromebooks. And she's both books and technology, and Ms. Dora's also very technologically so, inclined. So this library is for all different levels? <laughs> all the, levels, yeah, okay, and the okay. teachers can rent it out if they need to do group okay. work and things like that. Okay. So for the books, of course we are English schools, so we do also have some French schools. French, of French, French books. Three quarters English and a oh, quarter three, French. A quarter French, okay, okay. Yeah. So if you're wondering where the books are housed, they're across the hallway. So this is more like the girls can sit and work and chit chat. The other one is what we call the quiet library. This so, is the quiet library okay. where the girls have to work independently here. Um, they can sit and there's bean bags in the back and things like that that they can. So basically it can come anytime. Beyond anytime, the eight to five, but it's independent working. Whereas across the way, okay. they can work in groups and have snacks. So no food, no drinks. No food, no drinks. Yeah. And whereas over there, they do have that. Okay. Good? Thank you. So how many houses do we have here in the school? I mean, well, I see the different colors. There's many. I mean. Yeah, so there's eight houses. Oh, it's house. the last name of eight women that brought the Sacred Heart values and tradition and education to North America. So there's okay. 22 schools in the U.S. and two in Canada. So for example, Digby House is the pink house with the bear as a mascot and girls from grade 7 to grade 12 are mixed and matched into these houses. There's inter-school competition, fundraising initiatives, um, all the st individual students' extracurriculars go to enhance the overall house points and at the end at graduation they get bragging rights to say so, I'm the best house. Uh, and yeah. so faculty and staff are also in there. So my house is Jerusier, where the yellow house with oh, the, the bumblebee. House. Okay. Um, so it's, it's a way for the students to meet the faculty and staff in, in a fun way, you know? Mm -hmm. So all the students in grades 7 and 2 11 have a desk here. They keep their books here because we don't go from classroom to classroom with our backpacks. They carry their books. So this is actually um, a very typical Sacred Heart room called the study hall. Study hall. Um, however, okay. most of the schools in North America have done away with this space because to enhance facilities and, and just using the space for maybe more of an alternative way of things. We surveyed our alumni and our alumni really didn't want to get rid of it. So we're keeping the tradition alive. Okay. <laughs> I really like this. I just want to show Mr. Jews now. Yeah. Sure. Okay. So their alumni have uh, donated okay. the desk. Okay. Okay. And then the desks are, have each a number, so the girls know their seating plan and whatnot. But these are very traditional desks. That's the culture of the school, also part of the culture, yeah. 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 Or there's another room, small room in the net. So it's Ms. Kuzma's office, who's the director of student, student. Okay. student life, which gives her close proximity to the students because she does everything outside the classroom. Oh, okay. So she's director of student life. And she's also an alum. A lot of our female staff are alumni, so yeah. we'll see a few. Hi, Mr. McCray. Okay, Mr. McCray is, is uh, the head of our math department. Okay. Um, and I would like to show the different math streams. I think that particularly for your clientele, it might be of interest. Right. So we follow the regular Quebec curriculum from grade seven to grade 11. And then in grade 10, they have the two options of following kind of like the social studies way or if they're looking to apply, like apply to business or um, science in post-secondary, then they would do the science option. But we also have an accelerated math program that happens in grade eight, where they do grade eight and grade nine math. So that leads them to doing calculus when they're in grade 11, which is a year ahead of the Quebec curriculum. Okay. So for our students that are very 
mathematically endowed, um, they can actually speed up the process. I was never that student, but... <laughs> <laughs> so we need different choices. So, so they have different yeah, choices, yeah. So, yeah. so basically any students that like, we identify in, in secondary one, so grade seven, that have like, uh, you know, the regular program is kind of very easy for them. It's a more challenging program gets them ahead than the rest of their peers. So they write the ministry exam a year earlier, and then at the end they can do basically a SAGEP level calculus course in grade 11. The Asian student used to, you know, yeah. you still I'm not sure our... is that true or not, I mean, so. Yeah, I, like I actually, like I taught in China for a year, and I taught in South oh, wow. Korea for Amazing. a year, yeah, wow. before I started my career in Canada. And yeah, the, a lot of the uh, Asian. Asian students are very, uh, they're very ahead in math when they come here, so yeah. they usually join our accelerated programs. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. It thank was you, Mr. McRae. Hi. So this is here. our grade 12 class, um, hence they're not in uniform. So our grade, <laughs> yes. our grade 7 to 11 students are in uniform, and our grade 12 class has the luxury of not okay, having so it's to not be. Okay, necessary. No, we're trying okay. to like, you know, yeah. give them some benefits of still being in a high school setting, but not in CJEP and not having to wear a uniform and things like that. So, yeah, so it's a little bit more casual. <laughs> casual. <laughs> but, uh, essentially, they're all working, like you can kind of go at your own pace for the grade 12 program. So they're all at like different places and then I'm here sort of as the in-person guide that like helps them with assignments. Do you want to talk about your art program for <laughs> 7 through 11? Yeah, so that probably makes more sense. We're in the art room. Uh, <laughs> we kind of cover everything. I like to really go through a lot of media exploration. So grades 7 and 8, you're usually learning more the basics, like drawing and painting, uh, like understanding form and shape. And then I move into more complex things as they go along. Uh, but I like to really cover everything, not just drawing, painting. We do a lot of sculpture. Uh, we're going to be doing... I usually do... Sometimes I try and touch into other things, even like wood burning or embroidery, mix it up a little bit, and I go based on their strengths. So I see what they like as a class, mm -hmm. and then I move towards that when I'm picking themes uh, and different units. And then you have art club. Oh yeah, we have art club after school as well. So it could be for students who are in art class already and they want to just work on their projects and get extra time. It could be for students who don't take art and they want to learn something. And sometimes people just come and they just want to hang out. <laughs> <laughs> we'll leave you to it. Thank, thank you. you. Thank Bye, you ladies. So this is the music room. Hi. So this is our grade seven class. Wow. So there, some of them may have done music. Miss Walbrook is the head of our fine arts That's department. Uh, she also does the concert band. So we do wind, percussion, and brass. No strings, but at the talent show, often the girls that play the violin or the piano will. So grades seven and eight, the students do art and music in their curriculum, and then it becomes a choice, art, music, or drama in grade nine. Thank okay. you, ladies. Thank you, ladies. Thank you. Up here is all the French classes. So we offer three levels of French from basic, Beginning. basic second language yeah. to langue d'enseignement, which is the French course that the French high schools are doing here in Quebec. Yep. So the girls that are in that program will also do their social sciences um, as well as, and, and then graduate with a bilingual certificate. Um, so girls can fluctuate between the grade, like the levels, and they can go up or down depending on their ability. And then we also have French tutoring after school for our international students that need to have a little bit more basic level. This is, yeah. leads to the residence. So the girls actually that live here, we have space for 22 students. Miss Powell is like the Canadian mom or the residence life Who coordinator. Take care of the so she's got her private entrance when she's not on duty, and then she's got her entrance that leads out to the girls if they are ill in the evening or just want to talk. But when she's on duty, her door's open, the girls hang out. So it's on this floor right now. And then we have the Kitchen that's here. Okay. So this is Jenny, uh, who's from South Korea, and oh, Isabel, here, right? Isabella, who's from Mexico. So it's yeah. two girls per room. They have two locked drawers in each of their desks. There are more also locks. They also have storage under their beds. Uh -huh. um, and then it's shared washroom facilities. So there's a washroom there and there's a washroom further down the hall. So they have study period 
um, in the evening, Sunday to Thursday for an hour to two hours, depending on their grade level. And then on Saturdays, there's always an outing off campus. So like James was just saying, they've been to Zistrant, they went to Ottawa, they went to the Eastern Townships. Uh, they traveled a lot. They, tra they went to a hockey, la yeah. Yeah, last week, they went to a hockey game in Laval, women's hockey. Um, they've been to a Habs game. But you're always organized by the school. Yeah, all, sure. and taken by the boarding staff as well. Their activities are quite a lot. They go to play ping pong, and they go to every week. They go to every week. They go to every week. Yeah, so this is a common room. The girls can they play games and whatnot. Um, they have a piano. They can keep other snacks in here if they want. Um, they can do their homework in here if they want to be loungy. But there's also this space over here that they can do. So these are some of the outings that they've taken pictures this year. And what's the percentage of the international student of the whole school? Even like we're probably close to ten percent. Ten percent. Yeah. Before the pandemic, we we're at twenty. Okay. Uh, and that's kind of where we would like to be, but not surpassing that because we still want to maintain a Canadian Canadian English education, right? So, uh, but we do appreciate diversity and it brings in some new changes and new cultures even for our local students that get yep. to learn about like Cinco de Mayo, the Lunar Festival and all those things. So um, I think it's a great way to enhance each student both ways, international and domestic. Um, the girls, uh, they sell snacks at recess if the girls it, want. It's all the girls here? Yeah. Grade 7 to 11, the grade okay. 12 students are allowed off campus or they have their own kitchen. But the meals are two hot options, meat or vegetarian, and then a cold option like a poke bowl, a salad or a sub. Um, and the girls can bring their lunch if they wish for day students. Obviously, the boarding students, this is included in their tuition and they yeah. have the hot lunch program Monday through Friday here. Uh, and then the other meals they eat up in the residence, yep. as we just saw. The mural on the back was the French Sacred Heart here in Montreal called the So. It closed down in the 60s, but our former art teacher that was here for close to 30 years, she's the one who painted the mural in, in wow. memory of the So. Wow. And the class of, I believe, 93 donated the beautiful chandeliers that you see. So these are some of the alumni that have gone on to post-secondary and various uh, STEM-related programs. Um, it is actually proven that girls that are educated in... Who is the dentist from here, or from the school, right? Yeah, she's a dentist? Yeah. Okay, yeah. So she was... Uh, Civil engineer. Oh, that's yeah. the fabulous student who graduated from the school. Yeah, so oh, different wow. programs that they've gone on to do in the science programs. So girls are six times more likely coming from an all-girls school to pursue a math or science program, which are stereotypically male-dominated subjects in the co-ed environment. Yes. Yeah, okay. So they, they are basically are here every single morning or? No, 10 times a year. So out of the academic year, there's 10 masses. Um, we are a Catholic school, but you don't have to be Catholic in order to attend. There are ceremonies that happen here, um, but you don't have to participate <laughs> in any of the religious components. So okay. it's around religious holidays like Christmas, Easter, Thanksgiving, and it's a way for students and faculty and staff to reflect on what's going on in the world yeah. and just to be thankful that we have a good life. So, <laughs> 这个地方就是这个学校小教堂那么成为医生呢那么放学呢
，咱们魁省的教育体系其实是到十一年级结束了。对，然后就上架了，上预科。<笑>但是现在呢，因为九十六号法案的公布，很多家长对预科呢信心不足了，对，担心法语。呃担心法语，主要担心法语，主要担心法语。所以这样的话呢，他们就希望把孩子放进十二年级，因为十二年级暂时不受一零一法案和九十六号法案的限制。对，那么他们可以考非常好的大学，加拿大考非常好的大学。啊，就等于是跳过预科这一块了，是这么这一块。对，因为他十二年级呢用的是安大略省的体系。哦，安大略省，安大略省的体系，所以他们要想考，因为满足华人学生的名校情节，他们考多伦多大学。更为方便，当然他们也可以考麦吉尔大学。对，学校科也是非常灵活的，在不断做做调整。那那下一期呢，我们会更加深入的去聊这个学校，然后去做更多的采访，甚至政策上的一些改变等等。对，对，好的，那我们敬请期待，非常非常期待。想了解更多蒙特利尔房地产资讯，请关注朱燕地产。